What's up, guys? So, I was about to sit down to record this podcast when uh, my roommates got a package from a friend that had some chocolates in it. So, I decided to eat some, and I am currently having an allergic reaction to it. Uh, It's pretty scary. As you can see, I can't talk very well. Uh, Luckily, I can breathe fine. So... That's why I'm not calling an ambulance or anything. Uh, But, yeah, it's quite scary. I don't know why I had an allergic reaction to just chocolate, but here we are. So, I'm going to wait till I get my voice back, and then uh, I will catch you up on the rest of it. So, uh, I am back. It's been about three hours from that last intro clip, and then that was about 30 minutes after I started having that allergic reaction, and uh, yeah, I guess I will tell you guys about it, because it was quite scary. Um, I just took a Benadryl, uh, so I'm a little bit tired, but bear with me, and We'll go through what happened. What I had was called anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis, which is like a severe allergic reaction. Uh, I probably should have went to the ER, but I mean, it's just a terrible time for this, you know, with the pandemic, corona. Uh, I would not want to be anywhere near a hospital unless I really had to be. So I just thought I'd try to wait it out see if I can make it through. I knew if I ever started to have trouble breathing, I would go, but that it never came to that point. Luckily, at least not yet. I'm actually technically not out of the clear yet, but I'll go into that later. I've been allergic to, I mean, I've been allergic to nuts since I was young, which I've always known. Uh, And then recently I was, not too recently, but maybe like close to 10 years ago now, I found out I'm allergic to eggs, and it used to be in my mind that nuts, especially like peanuts, was the bad one. Like, I had to avoid those at all costs, which I still do and will continue doing, but I have actually have accidentally eaten peanuts in my past, and nothing like this has happened. And then, same with eggs, I, it's not severe, like, I just... I can't touch them because they make my hands itch. And then I don't eat like cooked eggs or anything. If something has egg in it, I'm usually fine to eat it. Sometimes I can feel it, like it just doesn't sit right. That's how I describe it. So I do have a reaction to it. It's just very mild, so it's not that big a deal. And I mean, those are the two big things. So I was never really too worried about it. Like when I was younger, I was worried about peanuts a lot, but since, like I said, I mean, maybe a couple of years ago, I took a bite of like a peanut butter cookie on accident. I remember in elementary school, I accidentally ate a peanut. And both times, I was pretty much completely fine. Uh, so I just never thought like it would be that serious no matter what I did. But then today, uh, we got a package in the mail from one of our friends. She lives in Canada. She sent us some chocolates, some other stuff, which was really nice of her. And... Uh, my roommates called me out to come look at it. So I go out there, uh, I see the chocolate, and I decided, you know, I wanted some. Uh, the thing is, though, I've been pretty much avoiding dairy for close to a year now. I've never been, like, diagnosed as allergic to lactose or even diagnosed as lactose intolerant, but I just kind of made that diagnosis myself because whenever I would eat it, I would get stomach aches, digestion problems, So I pretty much completely cut it out of my diet. Every once in a while, though, I will 
have something with dairy in it, whether it's like, you know, uh, cheese or that's the big one. Uh, I pretty much never eat chocolate. I mean, I, I can't remember the last time I did. Well, actually, that's not true. I had chocolate on Friday. We deep fried Oreos at work, and I ate a couple of those. So that's interesting. But, but yeah, usually never. I haven't had a like a candy chocolate bar in forever. But I just saw those, and I decided, you know, I wanted to eat some. So I took a lactose pill that I that I have which I sometimes take when I do eat dairy. Uh, it doesn't work great, but it does help. So sometimes I do that. So anyway, I grabbed the lactose pill, and then I ate three different uh, chocolate bars. Uh, the first one was called an Aero Bar. Uh, it, oh no, I'm sorry. The first thing I ate was Smarties, but these were from Canada, and they had chocolate in them, which was interesting. Uh, I ate those. Then I ate something, I think it was called like a Coffee Mate. It was like a coffee chocolate bar. They're all like small, like small of those little bite-sized ones. And then I ate something called an Aero Bar, which is just milk chocolate. And interestingly, and interestingly enough, I made sure they none of them had peanuts in them. They put it right on the package that it, it was actually made in a nut-free facility or a peanut-free facility. So it was like, Oh, I'm definitely good to eat these. So anyway, I, I eat them and it was almost immediate, maybe like a minute or two later. I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm having an allergic reaction right now. And it started out, you know, pretty mild. It kind of felt like I ate too much egg or something like that. Like, so I wasn't super worried, but then it started just getting a little bit worse, getting a little bit worse. I could feel like it almost felt like my tongue was swelling up and like something was happening in my throat. And uh, yeah, I told my roommates, I was like, I think I'm having an allergic reaction. So we go through the wrappers, like double checking, making sure there's no peanuts, there's nothing I'm allergic to in it. And there wasn't, I mean, from what I understood, like I'm, I consider myself lactose intolerant, not, I don't have an allergy to lactose, at least that's what I thought. But yeah, those bars were just chocolate. And I mean, that's the only thing I had eaten in like four hours prior to that. So, I mean, it was definitely those chocolate bars. Uh, so yeah, I start, you know, saying like, oh, I, I think I'm having an allergic reaction. And I just got a little bit like panicky, like, all right, I feel it. It's fine, I'll get through this. But then, yeah, like I said, it just keep getting worse and worse until the point I couldn't really talk anymore. And I was considering like calling an ambulance or having my roommates take me to the ER or something. But like I said, I just, I really don't want to go anywhere near a hospital right now. Like it just didn't seem worth it. So I was just monitor monitoring it, making sure I could still breathe fine. And yeah, it just kind of bunkered down and got through it. I definitely had a little bit of a panic attack during it. I couldn't stop shaking. Like I just, I was scared. I mean, it was a scary thing because usually like, even if it was like a regular time, it would be scary, but I would be like, all right, if I'm either going to the ER, ER or I can go to the ER. But right now I look at it like, I mean, it's, I imagine it's probably really shitty there right now and I yeah like I said I just can't express how much I would not want to go there I mean I feel like if you do go to a hospital they're going to tell you like oh now you have to quarantine yourself for two weeks no matter what which I would have done if I had any shortness of breath or anything but that never came about so that's good I eventually called my doctor and they said to get an allergy test eventually I have to get an EpiPen because I'm supposed to have one of those and I just don't like I said, I never thought this would happen to me, but he also said that it can come back. Uh, so I have to keep monitoring it. And if it does come back, he's like, you have to go to the ER because it can get a lot worse. So it's been about three, four hours now. So I'm still feeling better and better as time goes on, but I hope it doesn't come back. I really just, I don't want to go to a hospital more than anything so yeah that's what happened 
I'm glad I had the podcast stuff set up so I could just hop in here, you know, get the content. I mean, this is great content. This is my second podcast and I almost already died podcasting. I mean, I, I'm here because, you know, I love the grind and I don't let anything stop me. Crazy. R really the worst time for this to happen. But I'm going to be avoiding chocolate now and pretty much all dairy, like 100% at least until I can get an allergy test, which I'm not gonna make too much of an effort to do right now. That'll come down the line. Um, but yeah, so other than that, uh, I have, I've made that intro that you just saw, which is pretty good if I don't say so myself. Um, you know, that was my first time really working with like a green screen and it was definitely a process. I defined a bunch of creative ways to shoot it in my relatively small room. I mean, I think my room's actually pretty big, but to do what I was trying to do, it feels small. Uh, so I had to get creative, but I think it worked out well. Um, it was a lot of fun too. Uh, just doing something new like that, like the green screen was, was cool. And I think, yeah, like I said, it came out pretty well. I, uh, to make it though, I, I used Adobe After Effects, Photoshop, and Illustrator, which you probably know all about. You might even use them, but I just think it's funny, uh, how I use them. It's just so unconventional and weird. Like I was never properly trained how to use them. I just kind of taught myself and I mean, that's great, but I think it definitely would have been better if I took some sort of class or did something online, like really followed it, really tried to learn how to use these programs instead of just figuring it out on my own, because there are so many things I do that is just like not the best practice. But if it works, it works. That's what I say. It just, it probably takes me a little bit longer to do simple things than if I knew how to just do it properly. And I've tried to watch tutorials and stuff, but I just get so bored because I already know some of it and some of it I don't, so I have to sit through a lot that I don't care about. And it's really hard to break those bad habits that I have anyways. So I am improving though. Like I definitely am getting better at uh, using those programs. I'm able to do more now. I'm quicker. Uh, so that's good. Like it's not like I'm stuck, but it is funny my process of how I use those programs. Cause I mean, they're confusing. They can just, they're so powerful, but they're, there's definitely a learning curve. I've actually heard other people say that though, too, like the way they use Photoshop or whatever is just so unorthodox. If that's the right word to use, it's just, everyone kind of has their own way of doing it. So if it works, it works, but yeah, that was fun to make. I, uh, I'm glad. I did that. It might be a little bit too long. I think it's like 35 seconds, maybe a little bit shorter than that. But that's a long podcast intro, so I might not run it all the way through each time, even though I kind of want to because I love it. But I do understand that it's pretty long, so I might shorten it every once in a while and then sometimes play the full one. Anyway, that's that. I'm now full force full swing working on uh, that project behind me with the time machine. And I had a plan for this video or this series of videos, but a YouTuber I watched, his name is Matt Hojipta. I completely butchered that. I don't know how to spell, say his last name. Uh, I think he's from like, I don't even want to say I'm going to get it so wrong, but I think he's from like Sweden or, or, or somewhere that's not America because he also lives in Canada, but he's doing a mini like film festival where you can submit a short film about Corona. Uh, and he's going to pick the best ones and give them a cash prize. And I think I'm going to kind of pivot what I'm doing and turn it into a short film based about based on Corona using that time machine, because I don't know. I just think I can make something cool. The only problem is the, video submissions have to be under three minutes, which is short. 
what I had in mind in mind to do with it did involve Corona, so it's already fitting. But it would be a lot longer. It would be like four, five, six videos, and it would I would really stretch it out. But I I'm thinking of just you know saying forget all that and try to make a three minute really cool video out of it, which is short. I don't know if I'll be able to do that, but I think that's what I'm going to try instead of just doing what I was going to do because I want to enter that competition. I think if I can pull it off, it'll be pretty cool just because that thing back there, if you're watching the video version, is just it just looks pretty cool. And I have an idea of what I want to do, which I think won't be too hard to make. I mean, it probably will, but I have like his... You can enter the competition until, I think he said the 26th of April. So that leaves me like nine days to do it. Or the, well, I don't know, whatever. It's like a little bit over the week, over a week, I think, to uh, produce it, which will definitely be cutting it close. I don't know uh, if that'll be enough time for me. I mean, I hope it is. I'm currently storyboarding what I want to do. Here, I actually have them. A storyboard is uh, when you kind of just like draw each scene individually and you get like a picture of what you want to do in your mind. It's time consuming, but it definitely helps when you get around to shooting. I mean, you, you just have such more a clear idea of what you want to do. So I'm doing that. And yeah, I think I'm going to turn that into like a three minute short film about Corona. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But... Other than that, uh, Corona is still terrible. Uh, this was supposed to be Masters weekend this past weekend. It was Easter too, which is one of my favorite sporting, event, sporting events all year. I absolutely love the Masters. But, you know, they technically postponed it right now. It's not completely canceled, so at least that's good. And then, of course, we missed... Uh, all of March Madness, which is also one of mine and like everyone's favorite sporting events. It's just electric to watch, super fun. And then, yeah, there's I've got football season to look forward to, which I really, really hope happens because I cannot picture a world without the NFL. I mean, I, yeah, I just love it so much that would suck if it ended up getting completely canceled. I mean, that would be crazy, but I don't think it's that crazy of an idea. I think it has a possibility of happening. Happening. Uh, I really have no idea, but I really hope we get to watch the NFL in September. I actually had some more thoughts I had about the NFL that I want to get into, but I'm going to save that for a later date because... You know, having this allergic reaction kind of took up a big part of this. And uh, I don't want to try to cram in something, this thought I have. So I'll probably save it for next episode or something. But yeah, today definitely did not go as I planned it. I I can't believe I had an allergic reaction like that. It's uh, It surprised me, definitely. It uh, could not have happened at a worse time, like I said. But I'm still here, so that's good. A skill I need to work on for podcasting is talking a little bit slower. I mean, I'm doing it pretty well now, but sometimes uh, when I get rolling, I start talking super fast, and that's not ideal because I'm trying to fill up like 20 minutes here, so I gotta slow down a bit and uh, you know really take my time just so I can fill up some time. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. Uh, I'm getting time to tired. My voice is going. Uh, this Benadryl, it be hitting different. So yeah, thanks for listening. That is my allergic reaction story. So yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.